I'll always have your back, as long as you stop talking about my husband being broke and not having a job. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Raphael and I am here to review episode 12 of the Real Housewives crowdfunding for their business of Salt Lake City. We start the episode off right where we left off with Heather revealing to us that she has a purple eye. Her eye is closed shut. So what does she do instead of going to the hospital to get it checked out? She calls Jen Shaw. <laughs> so Jen, she comes on over. She's looking at the eyeball like, oh my goodness, I know I did this. I remember it so vividly. I better lie and pretend like I don't know what she's talking about before they give me 10 more years to my sentence. Let me play dumb this entire episode. <gasps> Heather, wow, I can't believe this. What happened to your eyeball? Oh my goodness, let's go to the hospital. Do you need an ice pack? What happened to you? <laughs> I'm like, Jen, please, you know exactly what happened. This was you, allegedly. You know, these are my speculations. So Heather, Heather was being so annoying from the very beginning of this episode all the way to the very end because she is dragging out this whole eyeball situation. Even now, in real time, she's still dragging this out and we still don't know what happened. So her and her big ass glasses, she's just like, you know, Jen, I really don't want to discuss this. Even though I called you and Meredith to come on over to look at my eyeball in front of all these cameras in production, I really don't want to talk about it right now. Like, this is a very private matter and I want somebody else. I want the person who did this to me to speak up. I don't want to put them on blast. And I'm like, Heather, like, you can't be serious. Like, you know... Well, you know, we'll get to it in a second, my speculations. But then she was just like, oh, we need to call Meredith. We need to call Meredith over. So Meredith, she comes out and over. She's looking at the eyeball. She was just like, oh, Heather, Heather, what happened to your eyeball? Oh, my goodness. We were together till 4 o'clock in the morning. How could this have happened to you? I can't believe this. And look at your arms. You have a bunch of scratches and a bunch of wounds and everything. I can't believe this. Should we get a paramedic? Like, I can't believe this. Jennifer Shaw, was this you? <laughs> Meredith, she cannot believe it. She's looking at it like, wow, like what's going on? The only thing that Heather kept telling Meredith and Jen was, oh, I don't feel like talking about it anymore. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. I'm looking at you, Jen Shaw. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So let's come up with a cover story together. So that way nobody speculates anything on my eye. I'm looking at Heather like, you can't be serious, right? Like if I was production, I would have told Heather, Heather, come over here for a minute. Let's chit chat. So I know, Heather, I know, Heather, that you feel like you're going to come back for season four if the show isn't canceled once Jen goes to jail. But if you don't start naming names and explaining what happened the night before and how Jen did this to you, I mean, allegedly, Jen did this to you. <laughs> Again, my own speculations. I'm sorry, but your snowflake for next season is going to be melted and you're not going to be on the show anymore. Because even to this very day, like right now, current time, we still don't know, right? I believe in the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip season three trailer, I believe that Giselle... <laughs> Giselle, out of all people from Potomac, she asks Heather, oh, so Heather, what happened to your eye? And what does Heather tell Giselle? Oh, I don't know. I don't really remember it. And then Candace, again from Potomac, she tells Heather, oh, well, I really don't believe you. <laughs> so I'm very curious to see how she's going to maneuver through that situation. You know, and again, to this day, we still don't know. And somebody had just commented on her Instagram recently and was like, oh, Heather, are we ever going to find out what happened to your eye? And what does Heather say? She replied to the comment and she was just like, oh, well, I'm coming out with a book. Like she's going to come out with a book, I believe, next year or something like that. And she says that she's going to explain this situation possibly in her new book. And I'm like, oh, so that's what you're doing. You're trying to capitalize off this whole black eye situation for profits for your book. I mean, I don't know, Heather, if it works for you, okay, but I, I highly doubt it because, I mean, we cared for, like, one episode, but the longer you drag this out, the more the audience is not going to give a fuck. Like, my speculation on this whole thing is that the reason why Heather is not mentioning who did this to her eye or want to talk about what happened the night before is because she knows that the person who did it is none other than Jennifer Shaw herself. <laughs> Like, it was Jen. Like, it's so clear that it was her, allegedly, or at least that's what I think. Because Jen, her whole entire demeanor, her whole entire behavior, this entire episode, she was very, you know, in the shadow. She was very, you know, in the back and everything. She was kind of like an extra. She wasn't out there like how she typically is. You know, she's always yelling in somebody's face or getting physical or trying to push somebody or trying to be the queen bee. This episode, she was very, like... Oh, well, you know, I feel bad for what I did to Heather and they keep talking about this whole situation. So I'm just going to be in the back and hopefully nobody notices me. At least that's the type of energy that I got from Jen Shaw. Heather from season one all the way up to now has shown us over and over and over again that she's willing to be Jen's doormat no matter what in any given situation. So it wouldn't be surprising if she was to cover up this whole situation for Jen in order for her not to get in trouble. Because can you imagine if Heather put it out there like, oh, yeah, OK, so I'm sorry, but the person who did this to my eye is none other than Jen. Can you imagine? 
imagine what would that do to her in her case, her ongoing legal case? I mean, they would probably give her more time to her sentence. Like, oh, the judge would probably be looking at Jen like, oh, not only did you scam people out of the money, but you're also violent. And again, Jen, she does have a track record on this show all the way from season one to now to recently to like two episodes ago when she kept pushing Lisa of trying to get physical. So her getting physical with Heather on accident or in a drunken rage, it wouldn't be surprising. I feel like they were probably play fighting and you know, Jen, she probably took it way too far like how she did with Angie KLMNOP a couple of episodes ago when she poured the champagne on her head and she was probably like, oh, Heather, stop, 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 pop. And then she hit her in the eye and boom, we get the purple eye. So I feel like the person who could get to the bottom of this whole situation is none other than Annalise Keating herself. <laughs> So that's my speculation on the whole situation. Either that or I feel like this whole thing is a scheme set up from Todd to come at us with the bullshit. <laughs> Back downstairs, we see Whitney getting ready for the day. Lisa, she comes in to talk to her. She was just like, so Whitney, what's going on? What's happening? Is everything okay between you and Heather? What's going on between you and Meredith? Whitney, she goes on already to produce. And she was just like, um, well, Lisa, I just feel like everything between Meredith and us and everybody in this group, Meredith tries to manipulate everybody so we can't all be against you. But I'm a big girl. I'm not a little girl anymore. So I, I see through her acts. I'm not falling for it. I'm not going to be manipulated by, by, ooh, is, is that a ladybug? Ooh, I love ladybugs. Uh, I'm not going to be manipulated or fooled anymore by Meredith. Meredith is against you. Lisa, uh, of course, she falls for it. She takes the bait and she was just like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Like, what, Meredith? Meredith is against me? Like, I just feel like with Meredith, like, she just, she holds a grudge against me and she's not going to let it go. And, I mean, I do agree with Lisa. Meredith, I, I just wish that Meredith would just tell Lisa to her face, like, look, I'm not forgiving, I'm not forgiving you and yes, my intentions are to hurt your feelings and to take you down because I'm still not over your hot mic moment from last season but Meredith she goes on and pretends that she's over the situation but behind Lisa's back she's talking shit about her and Whitney Whitney's trying to manipulate Lisa and Lisa's falling for it because again from my memory it was Whitney Whitney you're the one that put all these rumors on Lisa out there. You you added fire to that uh to that you added gas to the fire that Meredith started when you went over to her house to talk about Lisa behind her back. And now you're making it seem like you're all squeaky clean. It's all Meredith trying to get everybody in the group to turn on Lisa. I mean, I don't know. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that Meredith is that smart to do something like that? I just I don't know. And I just feel like I wish that Lisa would just stop trying to apologize or trying to, you know, bring up this hot mic moment from last season and just kind of own it. Like, okay, yeah, I said that your family poses. Fuck you and your family. And... <laughs> And just move on from it. It's very unfortunate that Meredith and Lisa were once best friends on this show. And they were even kind of like twins. <laughs> you know, I remember at the, the very first season, I could not tell who was who between Meredith and, uh, and Lisa. And now they're like two completely polar opposite people. So then everybody, they all start meeting up in the living room. They're all going out to uh, do their activities. One by one, they all start joining Heather and her big ass glasses, she comes down and she just cannot wait to talk about her eyeball, even though she doesn't want to talk about her eyeball. So they're all there. Then we see Jen. I'm looking at Jen like, what kind of Spice Girl is this? She comes out with two big ass ponytails and everything. Again, she looks like somebody in the Spice Girl group, or at least in her case, she looks like Criminal Spice. <laughs> So Criminal Spice, she sits down, and again, just like I mentioned earlier, she's very quiet. She's not talking about anything. She's just like, okay, let me just sit here and look cute. Meredith, she comes on over. Dana, Donna, whatever her name is, the friend of the show, the extra, the producer, well, not even the producer, the camera girl at this point. <laughs> The girl who just walks, who walks in front of the cameras, she comes by and Angie K L M N O P. She comes out. They're all dressed really cute, right? So they're all sitting down. They're talking about what they're about to do for the rest of the day. Heather. You know, again, Heather being the person that doesn't want to talk about her eyeball, she talks about her eyeball. She was just like, okay, guys, um, I need to tell you guys something. Um, you know, because Whitney, she alluded to, okay, something happened last night. What happened? Heather, she was just like, you know, I, I don't want to talk about it, but um, wait, make sure that you got the boom mic over my head. Yeah, I know. I, I want to talk about it. Yeah, I, I so want to talk about it. This is so going to be about me, but I really don't want to talk about it, but um... This is my eyeball. And everybody was just like, <gasps> like they all started gasping and screaming and everything. And meanwhile, Jen, she was just sitting there like, oh, wow. <laughs> Lisa, she was just like, what happened? What's going on? What happened? Whitney, she was just like, oh, my God, Heather, you got a boo-boo on your eye. Oh, my goodness. Do you need a Band-Aid? I, I bring my doctor kit with me. We could play pretend doctor. What happened to your eyeball, Heather? Heather, she was just like, 
I think I think we all know what happened, but I just don't think that we want to talk about it. So then Lisa, she was just like, wait, so what happened? What happened to your eyeball? It looks like somebody socked you in your eye. Heather, she changes her conversation, the whole conversation, 15 seconds later. And she was just like, I, I don't remember. <laughs> And I'm like, Heather, you're on camera saying two completely different answers with 15 seconds in between. In the uh, confession of the producer, they asked Heather, so Heather, do you know what happened? What happened the night before with your eyeball? Heather, she caught an attitude with the producer. She was just like, um, it's pretty obvious what happened to my eyeball, right? And I'm like, ooh, wait a minute, not with the attitude. If I was the producer, I would have told Heather, now wait a minute, lower that tone before you get another black guy on the other eyeball, bitch. <laughs> Heather, Heather is just, she gives me the same vibes of somebody posting a selfie on, you know, their social media from a, from a hospital bed. And they're like, oh, I'm in bed right now in the hospital. I hope that everything goes good. And then the second that you start commenting like, oh, what happened? Are you okay? What's going on? What's happening? Then she replies, I really don't feel like discussing this right now. This is very private to me. Like that's the same vibe that she gives me. <laughs> They get to the first activity, which is go-karting around the streets of San Diego. I thought it looked like a fun activity. The cars look so adorable, so they have to be paired off in two. Heather, she was very strategic on who she chose as her partner. She chose Lisa Barlow. Why? Because she knows that Lisa is not going to question her about her purple eye because she's going to be too busy talking about herself. And she's right. <laughs> The next pair, we have Dana and Jen. The next pair, we have Meredith and Angie K. LMNOP. And then we get Whitney, and she's by herself. Bye. <laughs> so they are, they're off onto the streets, and it look, again, it looked like a fun activity. I don't know how Whitney managed to get herself stuck in the middle of the road sideways. <laughs> She was just driving and she it, it reminded me of that scene from the uh, the Austin Power movies when Austin Power he's in the truck and he's trying to back up and he keeps hitting the wall. <laughs> I'm like, Whitney, what the hell are you doing? But everybody's driving around. They're all trying to, you know, question what happened to Heather's eye. Dana, she's asking uh, Jen. So Jen, do you know what happened to her eye? What do you think happened? Jen, she's in that seat like, um, what? What do you mean? Why, why would I know anything? Um, uh, uh, no, keep, keep driving. Keep your, keep your hands on the wheel. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what happened to Heather's eye. I, th I think she, she doesn't want to talk about it. Oh, look, the sky looks so nice. <laughs> Meanwhile, Heather and Lisa, Heather was so right about Lisa. Lisa, she's talking about something completely different. She's she's driving. She's telling Heather, oh my God, Heather, like I got this dress and John, he doesn't love it. He doesn't love how it looks on me, but I love it. It's white. It's so cute. I love Taco Bell. Oh my God, is there a Taco Bell around here? Oh, Heather, you look so nice too. <laughs> No, you know, she's not questioning anything about her purple eyes. So, you know, Heather got what she wanted. Meanwhile, Meredith and Angie, KLMNOP, they're talking. They're also trying to, you know, get to the bottom of everything. So eventually they stop the cars and everything. The activity comes to an end. Meredith, she tells the group, Okay, everybody, so I rented out a winery for all of us to go. But I mean, I guess it's just going to be me, Jennifer Shaw, Heather, and Angie K. Elemental P. And the rest of you are going to go skating. So we're going to go to the winery and we'll see you later tonight back at the house. Goodbye, ladies. And Lisa Barlow, you better not talk shit about me behind my back. I'm watching you. So Lisa, Dana, and Whitney, they go skating. And I was wondering, with the skating scene, it looked very, very cute. But I, I was questioning when they were putting on their skates and they were just, you you know, walking around barefoot. I'm like, in a pandemic? But okay, so there is, you know, skating and everything. But I was wondering, how are they filming this? Because as they're skating, they're filming this, right? But like, is the cameraman or the camera person, are they also on skates? <laughs> like, how are they moving backwards at the same time that they're skating towards them? But it was a cute little scene. They stopped to get ice cream and all that. Meanwhile, back at the winery, they're talking about Heather's eyeball. Heather, they questioned her. Well, Meredith questioned her. And she was just like, well, you know, Heather, I'm very concerned about your purple eye. I really want to know what happened. You know, something happened last night. You need to talk about it. So then Heather, she gets all emotional about it. And her and her glasses, she was just like, you know, um, I, I just, I, I really don't want to talk about it no more. Look, there's my eye. I really don't want to talk about it anymore. But I, I'm going to keep talking about it for the rest of the episode and next week and at the reunion and in my book and Ultimate Girls Trip Season 3. But I just, I really don't want to talk about it right now. And I'm just like... You know, okay, whatever, Heather. So then I believe they ask her in the confessional again, like, oh, why don't you want to talk about it or anything like that? She was just like, well, I'm waiting for the person to confess. I'm waiting for them to say something first. And I'm like, well, good luck with trying to get Jen to admit that she's, you know, uh, guilty in this whole situation. I mean, it took her how long to admit that she was guilty to her alleged crimes, you know, scamming people? How long did that take? So I'm pretty sure that by 
you know, maybe like in two years, maybe she'll confess that she did this to your eye, allegedly. So then back at the beach, uh, Whitney, Dana, no, Whitney, Dana, and Lisa Barlow, they take a seat, they're eating ice cream, they're talking. Dana, she starts talking about, oh, so Lisa, you know, Meredith, she told me something about like, you have a loan or something on your, in your business, on your Vita Tequila, and she says that it's public knowledge and it's public records. I'm not sure, but she's spreading around that, you know, that type of gossip in the group. Meanwhile, back at the um, at the winery, Mer Jen Shaw, she brings it up. I believe she started talking about Lisa and she was just like, oh, well, you know, what's going on with you and Whitney first? Heather, what's going on with that? She wants to know that relationship first before she gets to Lisa and, you know, dropping all her information. So Heather, she gets emotional and choked up and she was just like, you know, I, I feel really betrayed by Whitney because Whitney, all of a sudden now she's up Lisa's ass and she's telling Lisa everything that me and Whitney talked about. And I just feel very, you know, betrayed about it. But I do have a soft spot for her because, you know, we were a family and we were close at one point. Again, Heather's issue... Even though I guess it's not an issue, I guess it's a good trait, but her issue is that she's always having a soft spot, a soft spot, a soft spot for people, which that, you know, kind of allows them to walk all over her. Example, Jen Shaw and now Whitney, even though she's kind of having a bigger backbone towards Whitney, which is impressive. So then Jen, she was just like, okay, so, you know, Lisa, since you're talking about her, I heard that Lisa is supposedly crowdfunding because she doesn't have enough, enough money to function her business via tequila or something like that. And she wants people to crowdfund $25,000 or something like that. So Meredith, whoo, Meredith, all she saw was stars in her eyes. She was just like, hold on, hold on, Jen. Uh, tag me in, tag me in, because I want to talk about that too. Okay, so what I heard, um, so I heard that she does, she can't really afford her business and she is crowdfunding and this is all public knowledge. It is all on the internet, so I am not spreading any type of gossip behind Lisa's back, but she is crowdfunding because she can't afford anything. And I'm like, hmm... I don't, I don't know, Meredith, the more and more you continue talking or whatever, the more I'm like, huh, maybe you are trying to look for Lisa's downfall, which I, I like I said, like Lisa said earlier, you, you have not forgiven her for the hot mic moment. And it is what it is. Just don't, you know, don't say it in the future. Oh, I've forgiven you. I moved past it. I moved past it because you obviously haven't because I keep thinking that she has, but then she goes back 10 steps with well, Lisa trying to be sneaky and just be upfront about it. So back at the beach, Lisa, she's shocked at all this information that Dana is telling her. She's telling her, wow, 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 Dana, are you serious? Meredith is going behind my back to talk about my Vita tequila business and saying that I crowdfund for money? First of all, I'm the richest person on this cast. I don't need to crowdfund for anything. Yes, I have a loan, but it's for my international business. It's not for Vita tequila. While she was too busy running her mouth, I was running to the bank, cashing in a check, a Trump check, Donald Trump. She needs to get her facts straight before she talks about my business. Because first of all, she's always claiming that, oh, she's forgiving me for this hot mic moment, hot mic moment, hot mic moment. Obviously, you haven't. You haven't forgiven me for at all and you want to see me fall. You want to see me, you know, be in fatal position until I cry and boo-hoo and all this. And it's not going to happen. And it's crazy because Meredith is the same person telling me that I have mental issues and I have mental issues and I have mental issues. Well, guess what, Meredith? I'm not the one that pops pills. That's you. You do that. And I'm like, wow, Lisa. So now we bring in allegations of popping pills for who knows what. Like, wow, you know, you can, you can kiss that friendship between you and Meredith. Goodbye. It's not ever going to, you know, be repaired because every time you try to move forward, it's, it's technically Meredith that keeps trying to like dig up the past. Like, Meredith, you kind of need to let it go. So Meredith and her group hop back into the van to head back home to get ready for this Greek party that NGK LMNOP is hosting in the van. Meredith, she continues talking about Lisa and this F, F, S, S, E, F, C, C, B, R, B, T, T, Y, L, whatever three letters letters they were using of this whole thing with Lisa and this loan that she supposedly has on her Vita tequila. So she starts off and she was just like, well, I mean, somebody did give me an anonymous message in my DMs stating that Lisa does have a crowdfunding thing online. And I've seen the articles and, you know, it's all out there for the public record. And I'm like, what do you mean you anonymously got a DM? Just, you know, random information on Lisa. You know, it was your son, Brooks. <laughs> He was probably messaging Meredith like, Mom, look, I got a new article from this blog. <laughs> So then Heather, she starts reading the article. They start discussing all this and all that. And GK, LMNOP, she's feeling some type of way because obviously her loyalty lies with Lisa. So in her confessional, she was just like, um, I, I, I just feel some type of way that they're discussing everything about Lisa like this. And I'm Lisa's friend. And, and I just feel weird about this whole situation. And I'm like, oh, okay, so, so, so do something about it. <laughs> 
Like, if you're gonna be such a good friend, why don't you say something like, oh, you know, you guys, I don't agree with this. You know, I'm her friend. I don't like that you guys are talking shit about her behind her back while she's not here. Let's wait till we get to the house so you can say it to her face. But she's just sitting there like, I, I like this man. <laughs> I'm like, Angie, you see, this is why you don't have a snowflake, but whatever. So they continue doing that, this, that, and the third. Uh, Meredith, she continues talking shit about Lisa. And, you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, you know what, Lisa Barlow? I don't feel bad for you either because you did say some crazy shit about Meredith in that hot mic moment. So, I mean, I don't blame Meredith for trying to get some payback or trying to drag you as well the same way that you dragged her. You know, tit for tat. So, Meredith, she continues on and she was just like, well... Um, I mean, you know, I, I mean, it's public, it's public knowledge that, you know, they need a crowdfunding. And obviously her husband, John, he doesn't do shit. He doesn't have a job. So I'm, I'm, he, I don't think he doesn't do anything. That's why they need all these loans. And, you know, she has some nerves to talk about me and my family, how my husband doesn't have a job. And we have to relocate houses every other year. Yet your husband doesn't even have a job. Fuck you. And I'm like, wow, Meredith, she's engaging. <laughs> So they finally get back home. They're all getting ready for this Greek party. We see Lisa Barlow. She's getting ready. She's going as the... I believe that they, they they all have to dress up as some type of goddess. And she's going as um, Helen of Troy. I looked her up and supposedly Helen of Troy was the most beautiful woman in Greece. I'm looking at Lisa and I'm like, so where's the outfit? But So then what's her name? Angie KLMNOP or is, or is it Dana? It was one of the other, one of the irrelevant. So they go in the room. I think it was Angie. Yeah, it was Angie. So Angie, she walks in and she was just like, um, Lisa, I need to tell you something that happened in the van. So while we were heading home, um, Meredith, Meredith was talking, talking about your husband and saying he doesn't have a job and that you have all these loans and everything. Not your student loans, but your loans for your Vita tequila. Yeah. And I'm just like, can you say it with a little bit more emotion? Like... <laughs> Lisa, she was just like, what? 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 Are you serious? Like, she continues talking shit about this whole loan thing. Like, what? My husband, that is so funny. The fact that she thinks that my husband doesn't have a job, that's hilarious. My, my, my husband, John, he clearly has a job. He does something and just sit on his ass all day. Like, that's hilarious. And I'm like, okay, Lisa. <laughs> If you say so, because I mean, it's been three seasons and I still don't know what John does exactly for a job besides just walk around looking like a zombie, but, and drive you around every now and then. Uh, but then... Angie K, Elemental P, in her confessional, she, oh my God, I don't know what she thought she was doing, but she was just like, um, you know, I, I think that with Meredith, she obviously, she obviously loves, um, she obviously loves feathers and, you know, birds of a feather flock together, but they're not birds, they're seagulls. And the reason why they're seagulls is because seagulls always shit on people and people don't like seagulls. I'm I'm getting my snowflake for that for that line right there, right? No, oh, okay. I, I'll keep trying. I'm like, ew, boo. <laughs> that was so 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 fucking lame. Like you could tell that she she was like practicing that the the whole entire car ride home. Like, okay, I'm gonna say this in my confessional. I'm gonna say this in my confessional, and people are gonna love it. They're gonna be quoting this for years. <laughs> So they all start heading out to the dinner table and one by one, they all start taking their seats. Whitney, I forgot what goddess she was supposed to be, but her dress looked nice. Lisa, she takes a seat. Lisa is already pissed off from what Angie K just told her. I believe Dana comes in next. I forgot what goddess she was supposed to be. I think she was supposed to be the goddess of taking up space because I'm not sure what she's doing there. So she takes a seat and then Heather, she comes out. All of a sudden, she's wearing an eye patch and I don't know what goddess she was supposed to be because she looked like number two from the Austin Power movies. <laughs> I'm like, first of all, how convenient that you all of a sudden just got an eye patch randomly on top of that. she it, it got, It's bedazzled. I believe she said that Jen and Meredith bedazzled it. And I'm like, okay, so I guess we just carry props on trips like this for convenient purposes. And I'm like, okay, take a seat. So she takes a seat. Meredith, she comes out. Meredith looks so good in that dress. She looks really, really pretty. She takes a seat. Jen, she comes out next. And I love, love, love Jen's look. I love the big hair, the dress. Everything about her look was so beautiful. She has a sword and shield. I believe that when the police come searching for her, she's going to fight them off with that. <laughs> she says that she's the goddess of war, more like the goddess of scamming, but she's the goddess of war, Athena, I believe. And her again, like I said, her whole look was so, so nice. Um, so she takes a seat. So everybody, you know, everybody's just waiting on the host, Angie K. Angie K, she makes this grand entrance and she has these two 
muscular guys trying to hold them up, trying to hold her up. And I was just looking at NGK like, oh my goodness, they're going to drop you and you're going to break your back. I was just watching like this because, I mean, if you're going to have some type of grand entrance where two guys are supposed to hold you up, at least have them be muscular. Both of them are just struggling to hold her up. <laughs> She's like this in their arms. Oh, hey, everybody. I'm Angie. I'm making my... Oh, shit. Hold, hold on. No, lift me up. Lift me up. What, what do you mean your legs are giving up? No, lift me up a little bit. Hold on. Let me hold on to your shoulder. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell, Angie K? Like, <laughs> they were struggling. <laughs> but eventually, she makes her grand entrance, and she looks pretty. So she takes a seat. So everybody's, you know, you could tell that there's a lot of tension on the table. Whitney, she's just waiting to, like, kind of let... uh Kind of, um set the whole thing in motion. She was just like, okay, let me see. As soon as somebody says, how's everybody day? I'm just gonna ask the question. And that's exactly what happened. I believe Jen, she was just like, oh, so Lisa, what happened when you went ice cream or went, with, uh, went to go get ice cream with everybody? You went roller skating? What did you do? Lisa was just like, oh, well, I mean, I had a great, great time with my friends, but you know, apparently I found out that some people here, they love talking about me and my businesses. Whitney was just like, oh, okay, that that's my cue. Um, Excuse me, excuse me, everybody. Um, did anybody here at this table talk about a SEC on Lisa? And then she just sat back for the rest of the dinner while everybody else went at it. <laughs> Meredith, Meredith, I was so disappointed because she doubled back on everything that she was just talking in the sprinter van and now she all of a sudden doesn't remember it. I'm like, you do know that you're being recorded, right? Like this is all on footage. Lisa is going to see this eventually whether you lie to her face or not. So just be upfront about it. Meredith, she tells Lisa, no, I mean, no, we, nobody really talked about anything about an SCC. I mean, we talked about it in passing, but it was nothing really serious. Lisa, she got so pissed off. And I mean, rightfully so, because you're lying to her face. I mean, if she's going on, uh, going along with what uh, Angie K told her, Lisa was just like, oh, really? Really? So you didn't talk about my husband? You didn't talk about John and how he didn't have a job or anything like that? You really didn't talk about him at all, Meredith? Because somebody at this table told me otherwise. Meredith, she was just like... Um, I don't know what you're talking about, Lisa. I never talked about your husband, John. I know he has a job. He does have a job. And I'm like, Meredith, you just said the complete opposite in the van. You just said, oh, you know, he doesn't have a job. And you're talking about my husband and my this and my that. Fuck you. But now, again, you're scared of Lisa face to face. I'm not saying that she is scared of her. But at least, you know, hold on to what you were saying 10 minutes ago in the van. So, Lisa, she's going off. Eventually, Meredith was just like, hold on, hold on, honey. No, 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 no. Because you're the one that's always talking about me. You're talking about me all the time. I never said anything about you. And then what did Lisa do? Who Lisa was pissed because she started mocking the way Meredith talks. And she was just like, oh, so what? So, so, so what? What, you're going to talk about me? You're going to gossip about me? You're going to gossip about me? Don't talk about me. Don't talk to me right now. And I'm like, ooh, Lisa. <laughs> If I was Meredith, I would have told Jen, Jen, can I just borrow that shield and that sword for a second? Say it again. <laughs> like so disrespectful so they kept going back and forth so then lisa she was just like oh so you didn't talk about my husband so you really want to lie to me and say that you didn't talk about my husband because angie k she told me otherwise angie k she was exposed they're all looking at her like oh so you're the one that opened up your mouth and you told lisa all this and angie k you know she's already she's already she's been a lame for the from the very first episode i've seen her but this just this just kind of like she crucified herself here because she was just like um, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't like that everybody here is friends with Lisa and, um, everybody's talking shit behind her back. And I'm like, that, that's it. Th that's it. You see, Meredith and Lisa are giving us something and you're just sitting there like, you're the one that kind of started this whole thing and you're just sitting there like, let's be besties. No, get off the show. <laughs> Dana, she's just sitting there. She's taking up space, not doing anything. Eventually, Lisa and Meredith, they kept going back and forth. Lisa was just like, well, what else, what else do you want from me, Meredith? I already apologized for this whole rant that I went on. What else? I thought we moved forward. Why you keep bringing us back? Meredith was just like, well, I mean, Lisa, I already told you before. If you want to get us to a better place, you already know what to do. But you just don't listen. Lisa was just like, uh, no, because you're insinuating that I have mental illness and that I need to go see a doctor. And I just don't appreciate that. I don't appreciate that. That's, what, that's the way you want us to be in a better place. It's not happening. And, I mean, they do play it in the flashback because Meredith did say, I'm not implying anything. I'm not implying that you have mental illness or anything like that. But, I mean, in the flashback, Meredith, I mean... I completely forgot that she did say that at the beginning of the season or last season or whenever, but you did kind of say, oh, you know, get help 
or something like that or go see a doctor. I'm not telling you what what's recommended, but you should go see a doctor. So, I mean, you were kind of implying a narrative. So, I don't know. So, they kept going back and forth with that, all this and all that. It didn't go anywhere. I believe that was that. Uh, I think that was it, right? Yeah. And then Heather, she tried to jump in and then all of a sudden she took off her eye patch. And I'm like, for somebody who really doesn't want to talk about their black or their purple eye, you keep talking about it and making it like the subject of the conversation. So, she was just like... You know, um, I just feel like my purple eye is kind of like a whole, you know, a whole sign to this whole situation. It's kind of like a, a a metaphor in a way. You know, my eye is closed shut and I feel like the door with Lisa and Meredith being friends, that door is also shut. So I feel like that's kind of like a metaphor, you know, and I'm like, put, put your eye patch back on and shh. <laughs> Talking, talking nonsense. And then, oh, I forgot to mention that. What's her name? Um, Angie K. She had also given them gifts like these evil eye necklaces. I believe that that's like her brand because on her Instagram, she promotes that that evil eye symbol a lot. I never knew that that's what it represented, but obviously she needs to, you know, take all those necklaces back because they're obviously malfunctioning because the evil is all through this table. <laughs> It's not going away, NGK. What's happening? But that was that. And then in the confessional, they asked Heather. So Heather, wait a minute. So you don't know who gave you this purple eye? And then Heather, she was just like, I, I never said that. I never said that. I never said I never said Who said that? I never said that. It's just I don't want to talk about it right now. And again, if I was the producer right then and there, I would have been like, Heather, either admit it right here, right now, or you're fired. <laughs> like, which one is it going to be? Because it's not making sense. She goes on to say... It's just, you know, I, I want to I wanna protect myself because if you hear somebody knocking on your door at four o'clock in the morning a specific way, then I have to fear for my life. I have to be careful with what I say. And I'm like, she's making it seem like it's like a hitman or something that came looking for her. I mean, it's possible because she did turn her back on the Mormon church. And from what I do know, from what they've been saying on the show, the Mormon people are crazy. Again, from what I see on the show, like they're very extreme with their policies, their rules and all this and all that. They seem like they don't want people to leave their church. And if you do, then something bad might happen to you, allegedly. So I don't know what, what Heather's trying to insinuate with that. But I guess if that's what we're trying to put on Jen, you know, I still think that that's my whole thing. But regardless, it was left out of to be continued. And that's that. I don't see Lisa and Meredith becoming friends in the future. And if they do, then it's probably just going to be for show. It's just going to be, you know, very like, oh, hi, bye. And that's it. Because I don't know. I just feel like it's too much bad blood between them at this point but that was that y'all let me know what you all thought about this episode down in the comments and i believe that this is going to be my last video of 2022 i think yeah i, I think it will <laughs> So happy New Year's to everybody out there. I hope whatever you're doing, you know, whether you're staying home, staying out or going out, doing whatever, shaking some ass, you know, be safe. And I will see you all next year. Bye, everybody. Happy New Year's.